Hampton. Um, these were a couple of races, divisions of a seven furlong maiden on the 21st of September. Seven furlong handicap. Yeah, sorry, seven furlong handicap, handicap yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason we're looking at these, we're going to talk about pace um, with particular reference to Wolverhampton today. And what I want people to do, we're going to show the two videos in full from start with commentary. And what I want people to do is to watch the race and see if they can decide whether they think horse has ridden prominently or horse has ridden perhaps midfield held up held the advantage, which of the two favoured more prominent racers and which of the two favoured horses racing in midfield or held up, and then we'll talk about it after the races. OK, so two divisions of a seven furlong handicap at Wolverhampton. Let's look at those two races in full. And there are four division one of the 32 red dot com handicap stakes. Fast start by Iri Uti. Also away well is Glenn Ridding as they go to the first corner. Climax for tackle is deep of those and very deep alluring star in the red with the yellow cab. Just tucked in behind the pearly pace is Muhandis followed through then by the pale jacket of uh, Ferris, the pale blue jacket. And then wide of that one, the stripes of Atlantis crossing as they head off down the far side. Legal Eagle next in the field. Loyal and Trust has set it settled towards the back of the pack as they continue continue their journey right down the far side of the track. Up front it's Glenn Ridding showing the way in the yellow and blue horse in cheek pieces. Alluring star, yellow cap is prominent. Climax for tackle just in behind them, the dark green and white. And then Muhandis towards the outside in the red and black. Iri Uti is next towards the inside of Ferris as they take that turn. That's followed through by Atlantic crossing. And behind that one, Loyal and Trusted. Legal Eagle in company with that one. Barry Sheen's getting a reminder towards the back. Black Douglas is the other one who races towards the rear of the field. Heading back towards the final two furlongs and taking the turn towards home. Gled Ridding tries to kick off the front for Freddy Tulitsky. Climax for tackles, travelling pretty well for Eddie Ahern. Three deep, alluring star. Right down the centre, Muhandis is followed through by Atlantis crossing. Fairest is next. Down the straight, they come back inside the final furlong. Glenn Ridding on the front end. Atlantis crossing is beginning to power home on the far side. Muhandis kept going near side. Atlantis crossing has hit the front. Atlantis crossing, Muhandis towards the near side and lashing up on the inside is loyal and trusted. But winning it, the red and white jacket of Atlantis is crossing followed through by loyal and trusted and they're off they're racing for 30 uh, division two of the 32 red dot com handicap stakes and blasting out of the stores davinsky's got a really fast one and he's sharing the pace with dubai bay who's right up there as well a little gap to lindora who's nestled in behind them also just behind the pace out wide is amethyst dawn and between those two horses as they take the turn head off down the far side is uh, graham k just tucked in behind the pace as well towards the outside of runners lindoro tries to make up a little bit of pace so uh, catalyzes with them as well but they're heading off down the far side and it's Dubai Bay in the black and pink diamond jacket showing the way to Amethyst Dawn in the blue and white the first of the two greys then Davinsky in behind them the black with the red stars that's followed by Graham Kay the second of the greys and wider of that one is Baltius sister in the black with the white sleeves as they leave the back stretch behind them they're followed through by Lindoro as they take the turn and swing back towards the home straight Charles Cott is next in the field catalyze out wide footsteps of Springs got some running to do back in the field as they take the turn back towards home it's Dubai Bay in front Amethyst Dawn is second, right on the fence. Davinsky's trying to stay with them. Bolt his sister down the centre. Off the turn, down the straight, a furlong and a half out then. And it's Dubai Bay in front. Amethyst Dawn trying to work its way upside. Bolt his sister down the centre. The record breaker, Davinsky tries to get up the inside fence. Down inside the furlong they go. Bolt his sister's just about hit the front. Amethyst Dawn trying to finish. Dubai Bay has kept going, but it's Bolt his sister and Ross Atkinson in front as they race to the post. And Bolt his sister won it to Amethyst Dawn. Rattling through for third, Charlcott full of by Dubai Bay. So they were two different divisions of a seven furlong handicap at Wolverhampton. Now, Hugh, we're going to look at the first three home in the first race that we saw. Now, just give us the three horses that we're looking out for and we'll highlight them on the screen here. Right, the winner is the horse in the red and white colours with the white star on the cap. Um, yep. That's Atlantis Crossing. Yeah, that's the one. The eventual runner up is the horse uh, loyal and trusted in the orange and blue colours with only two behind him. Uh, that one, yeah, uh, orange and blue colours. And the eventual third horse is Muhandis, who's in fourth place on the outside. He's been in fourth place throughout the race, and he runs on to finish third. So that's those three we've highlighted. Let's move it on and have a look at the closing stages. And if which we're looking at then for the yeah. horse in the, the, the white sleeves, the eventual winner, mm -hmm coming from off the pace here. And rel equally relevant to the point I'm, I'm making is that the, the three horses turning for home all weaken in the closing stages. 
um, and it's horses in this race that are ridden more conservatively um, that dominate the finish, or not, maybe not ridden more conservatively, but not towards the front of the, during the early stages, dominate the finish. Okay, so the first race we've looked at certainly suits horses coming from off the pace, and the first three have come from in behind off the home turn. The first three in that race come from off come, come from off the pace. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So or, or not not amongst the prominent races. Okay, so yeah. the prominent races there have wilted in the closing stages. If you look back then at the closing stages of the second race that we looked at, I'll highlight once again the first three home as they turn for home and see how they are relative to their finishing position. Of course, a seven furlong race. So what we're looking at you, maybe about two, two furlongs or so from the, the turning? Yeah, we're looking two furlongs from the finish um, and we're hopefully going to see the... Um, that's fine. Um, we're hopefully going to see the... The horses are involved in the finish. Right, the eventual winner of the race is the horse in the black cap with the orange epaulets, Bolty's sister, who's disputing second place on the outside. That's right, the eventual runner-up is Amethyst Dawn, who's the grey horse in the blue and white colours. And the eventual, the horse in the lead is going to finish fourth in, in the pink and black on the rail. That's okay. going to finish fourth. Uh, the only one that's going to come behind is the eventual third horse, who's in the black and white colours with the sheepskin noseband. Which is him there. That's right. OK, if we spin that on again, we'll have a look at the, the closing stage once again. And these three horses in different positions to the three we saw mm -hmm. in the first race. So this is a race where, as the race develops, not that many horses come from behind. Um, the horses that are in the first three turning for home fill three of the first four places. Only one horse runs on into third place. Uh, and as I say, the, horse, the horses that have been prominent throughout finished in the first three places uh, or three of the, three of the first four places um, why, why have we shown these two videos um, I think we need to actually see the sectional times for those two races to understand for me to explain why I'm quite interested in showing these two races um, I've, I've carried out a, a, I had a close look at these two races and I, I worked out the sectional times for the two races to the two furlong pole the first race Atlantis crosses, Crossings race, the race where the horses, the finish was dominated by horses, perhaps held up more. The time of the leader at the two furlong pole was 63.5 seconds. Balti Sisters race, the second race, where the horses that were racing prominently, the time of the leader at the two furlong pole was a second faster, 62.5. The reason I think this is interesting is because intuitively you would say that the race where the horses racing more prominently held on would have suited prominent races. And you intuitively, you would also say that the race where the horses who finished in the first three places having come from midfield suited hold up horses. The sectional times are actually telling us a completely different yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So what's actually happened here is that the race where the prominent races have, have held their pace, they've done extremely well because they've come off a reasonably solid pace. Equally, the horses that have dominated the finish from coming from a, a little way behind in the other race, the slowly run race, have also done extremely well because they've come um, from off a pace that actually didn't suit hold up horses. This is why I think that sectional times is so useful to punters because it is very difficult to tell just from watching a race. I'm sure some viewers will have been able to tell from the race that the pace in the first race wasn't as strong as the second race. I think it would be very difficult to say it would be a whole second slower, which is six lengths the, the way Polytrack is right. Polytrack's riding quite fast at Wolverhampton, very fast in fact at Wolverhampton at the moment, and it equates to about six lengths a second. Um, I think it would be very difficult just to tell with a naked eye the difference in early pace between those two races. It's a very simplistic um, analysis that because it's only looking at one sectional marker, the two furlong pole. That is a very easy place to get a marker at Wolverhampton. But I think it does highlight the fact that if you are prepared to put in the effort and work out some sectional times, you can actually get a picture of a race that perhaps with the naked eye is completely different to the one you would normally get. And it's quite subjective isn't it? because you could be standing watching a race with two other people on either side of you and one could be saying well they've gone quite fast and the other guy might be saying well they've not gone that fast and without the actual time there as you say the naked eye 
is quite hard to tell. It is really difficult. And commentators, and this is no criticism of commentators, <laughs> they often get it wrong. And it's, you know, why wouldn't they? Because it is so hard. Uh, you, you often see a commentator saying they're going a decent pace and you go back and look at the sections and they're not. And it's very difficult. I couldn't do it. I know I, know I can't do it. So I'm not being critical there. But um, I think it's, it does highlight, and some people say sectional times are of no, of, of no worth. But, you know, I, I definitely dif differ with that. And I hope that in, that's, those two races is a good illustration of why it can be useful to have, you know, any kind of sectional times uh, during, during the course of a race. We've got some, uh, hopefully we've got another graphic as well. There were, there were actually five races um, run at Wolverhampton on that day over, over course and distance. One was a two-year-old race and the others, the others were um, all-aged races. Um, I don't know if we've got I don't that think don't we have, We've not got the graphic. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, to leave that. But all, all that graphic was showing, I was, I, I was breaking it down into percentage of final time. Uh, okay. Because for each ra race and distance, you can work out what percentage of the horse's final time it should use on a certain section of a race. For instance, at Wolverhampton over seven furlongs, to run the race at its most effective, I think a horse should probably use about 72% of its final time over the first five furlongs of a seven furlong race. If, you, if the end result shows it's used significantly less than that, it's probably gone too fast during the early stages. Um, and you can, you can work out what the optimum time is just by looking at four or five good times for the class, I, in my opinion, and then, and then working out what, what percentage of their final time they should use on that section. Fascinating still. I don't, I don't know how you managed <laughs> I don't know whether, I'm, yeah, some of these whether this has been too, too complicated or what, I don't know. But um, I, I hope I've tried to explain it with some way. But all I'm saying is that it is not always easy to tell whether, whether a race has suited holder horses or prominent racers just just by the naked eye.